drought, storms, and now disease. I'm Steve White. Straight ahead tonight on NTV's Grow, we'll see some of the things affecting the crops in the area. And some think manure is smelly stuff, but it's also an important product Nebraska produces. We'll have more. Plus, we'll visit the county fair to see how they're spreading a positive message about agriculture. And we'll meet the farmers growing the corn for your Doritos. Grow starts now. Drought and storms have taken a toll on Nebraska crops. Now southern rust is the latest threat. NTV's Megan Johnson has more. Five counties have now found a corn disease called southern rust in some fields. Now most are at the eastern border of the state, but one case is confirmed in south central Nebraska. And that's typical of southern rust. This leaf comes from a Clay County cornfield. An extension educator, Jen Rees, says it's one of a handful in Nebraska showing signs of the fungal disease southern rust. It can't survive the winter here in Nebraska, and so it blows up on the winds from the south every year. Rees says it's appeared eight of the last nine years, and in 2006 and seven, some producers faced a long harvest after the rust took hold. It can result in yield loss, and it can also result in problems with stock strength because when you have a lot of leaf area covered by the fungus, then it takes out those carbohydrate reserves. Experts say farmers shouldn't panic. Southern rust can be treated. But before spraying, they recommend first scouting fields. Figure out how much is there, then factor in growth stage and cost benefits. Our fungicides have about a three week residual. And so if we are spraying too early and southern rust gets in there at really high levels, then they may be looking at a second fungicide application. And common rust is a perfect circle. Lookalike diseases such as common rust are out there too, so experts and recommend getting help with making sure it is the southern fungus before taking action. Again, these are samples that we're getting out of numerous samples that have been coming in, and it's usually just a small place in, in one field. Southern rust favors wet and humid conditions, so specialists say irrigated fields are more at risk, as are late maturing or replant fields. More info can be found on UNL's CropWatch website, and we'll have a link to that at Nebraska.tv. The beef state produces a lot more than steaks. We also produce manure. Some think it stinks, but it's also an important product. NTV's John Jankowski has more. Farmers in awe of a 42-ton spreader carrying the manure to spread on the soil. Today's demonstration showed manure is more than just a bad smell. Manure commonly is considered a hazardous material, when in fact it's actually a valuable resource with nutrients available to the row crop producer. Meissenberg was displaying different pump machines to transport manure. With fertilizer becoming more expensive, manure can be another source to help build soil structure. And the growing beef industry in the state results in more manure nutrients. We can utilize precision technology uh, to variable rate applications across the field uh, with both liquid and solid applications, uh, which just helps us dial in and manage that resource and product. Treffer runs a company which tells farmers where and how much manure they can spread. And GPS technology can help provide accuracy. With people in the industry trying to get as much nutrients from the manure as possible, you also have regulators making sure they don't use too much phosphorus and nitrogen. Groups like the Natural Resources Conservation Service work to keep those chemicals out of the state's water. You can get too much phosphorus, which can leach into streams and other water bodies. And um, eventually it'll make its way down to the Gulf of Mexico. After the success at this year's event, they hope to hold another next year at a new venue in order to reach more producers. This is also the time of year many migrant workers descend on Nebraska to do farm work. NTV's Alyssa Willard has our story. A bright and early call time for detasseling field workers. Much of the workers you see out in the fields look similar to these men, migrant Hispanic workers, many of which are from Mexico. Farmers and companies will hire contractors to bring the workers here by obtaining a legal H-2A visa or a temporary work permit. This year, Javier Chapa hired 68 workers to detassel for Remington seeds out of Hastings. And, and the way I see it is, look like this uh, crew I got 
is very, very responsible. He says it's a huge opportunity for these men. In 20 to 35 days, they will make about the same amount in the U.S. as they would make in Mexico working for about six months doing the same types of jobs. In Mexico, it's a little bit difficult uh, for for the salaries. I mean, don't make what they make here in the United States. I mean, uh, it's a great opportunity to have a, uh, the chance to come to the United States and, and be legal. The ages of Javier's workers range from 18 to 35. Many of these workers are farmers themselves with families. So working in the fields of Nebraska pays for expenses back home. We are sending it back to purchase fertilizer and clothing for women. Because there is very little work, we decided to come work with Mr. Javier, since the situation in Mexico is very poor, to see if we can build some rooms or something to help ourselves since money lasts longer. While the field work they do is similar to that back home, minus much of the technological advances, what's been most difficult for many of the workers is the social differences of being people in a foreign country, where you're considered to be an outsider. They stare at us in a strange way, same as when they go down there, but it's the same since people can't communicate, that's why we feel strange in a different place. All in all, the workers feel grateful for the opportunity to work jobs in the U.S. that many say Americans don't want to do themselves, and say as long as there's work and programs to come work, they'll keep applying and will keep contributing to the world of agriculture. Those who try to defend agriculture against what they call extremist groups like HSUS are finding support here at the county fair. I got a grand champion and a reserve champion. With the top two breeding heifers, Dawson Dye is a big winner at the York County Fair. Agriculture is a way of life on the family farm and feedlot. Sometimes I drive the tractor. The county fair proves to be a friendly audience for a group called We Support Agriculture, putting a positive face on animal welfare issues. To be the opposition against the animal extremist groups, so we're particularly concerned about PETA and HSUS. I think the industrial model that we've seen take root over the 30 years has been a disaster. Their chief target is the Humane Society of the United States. NTV spoke with its CEO, Wayne Pacelli, last year. He said the group is a mainstream organization looking out for animals, something Pacelli says farmers don't necessarily do. Animals are kind of not the central concern of the producer, that it's really driven by more production. HSUS has supported legislation in other states, but not in Nebraska, where the governor is the loudest critic. That's one of our concerns right now, is that Governor Heineman has been a huge opponent of the extremist groups and a huge supporter of agriculture, and he's been very verbal in those messages. And with him leaving office and with the turnover in the senators that we're going to have, that is you know, of some concern. So, Jolanda Jung makes the rounds at county fairs, showing thousands of Nebraskans agree with groups like the cattlemen, pork producers, and Farm Bureau. If you like steak, you support agriculture. You may not realize it when you open a bag of Doritos, but the corn in that snack may be grown closer than you realize. Learn more in our Farm Family of the Month still to come. Up next, Marilyn takes us inside the Nebraska State Fair.